Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello friends, due to repeated requests, I am commenting further on Megan's white suit in New York. You know, sometimes there's not a lot to say. I understand that in California, white suiting is appropriate year-round. In New York, it's not. White is traditionally only worn between Easter and Labor Day. Can you break that rule if you're an avant-garde fashionista? Sure, but that's clearly not what we're looking at. Also, good luck. Winter white would apply to a cashmere coat, a mink cape, a mohair shawl, a classic unbleached Aaron knit sweater. Winter Winter white is meant to evoke the beauty of fresh snow. October is a little early, a little off season for it. Winter white is also not white, unless you have a kind of mod, icy blue, silver, white, snow bunny type thing happening. Winter white is cream, ivory. Is ignorance a defense? You be the judge. As for the fit, Megan did those things she always does. She left the trousers too long and they drag on the floor. She cropped the jacket too short and it makes her look wider, not slimmer. But the cardinal sin with this suit is simply choosing it in the first place. I think people could argue about what good taste is and isn't until the end of time, but its application, in my opinion, is mostly about refusal. She should have never bought this in the first place. It's unfixable. This is the suit, as shown in the designer's lookbook. As originally shown, it has a bondage fetish reference to it that not only makes it kind of inappropriate to wear to an actual business or networking event. Although I think at a fashion event, you could get away with it, but obviously a totally sociopathic choice to wear to a mental health summit. As for the accusations that Megan wore a white off the shoulder or boat neck top in New York City in order to push Google results for the last time she wore an extremely similar outfit way back onto pages no one ever looks at because the last time she wore a very similar outfit. She accepted that Kennedy Award for fighting racism in the royal family that her husband has since acknowledged does not actually exist. Yeah, I don't put that past her. That said, to quote the late great Diana Vreeland, we all need a splash of bad taste. It's hearty, it's healthy, it's physical. I think we could use more of it. No taste is what I'm against, end quote. <laughs> <laughs> is all press good press? Can two play the PR SEO game? Let me know in the comments below. You're looking for like decadent uh, and also succulent. I'm looking for understated Annie Leibovitz for Vanity Fair. I want us to look like two very rich people that have just woken up after fainting on a dusty old couch. Wrong word. Okay, authentic. Par ce que tu crois. No faction of society deserves to be discriminated against, especially women who are in business faction. Husband will back me up on this. I had a six and a half season career as an actress in television, which I put on hold to devote all my time and energy to raise two million dollars for charity. Oh yes, and two children. And on top of that, I managed a staff of 12. You ran your own business? A household staff, yes. Could we remember, please, that these are real people with real problems, people? And while I can't pretend to fully understand them, I can at least attempt to care. One of my top priorities will be to... to change people's misguided and ignorant perceptions of women like you. You did not choose this life. No, each one of you was born to be an entrepreneur. When it comes to choreo, always leave some room for spontaneity. You have the opportunity to climb out of the quicksand that was your past and stand firmly in the present. Let us celebrate that. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.